Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of our Patch Notes Preview Series. Today we're going to be talking about the first patch in 2011, coming in January 4th. Our recent patches have all had themes associated with them. What's this patch's theme? Well, this patch is about buffing things. Uh, we've had a couple of patches previously where it's been, uh, you know, some tough nerfs and some, some really uh, kind of what I like to call medicine changes, where it's, you know, they're not necessarily the most popular changes on the surface, <laughs> but they help fix the game a little bit. You know, we've seen this with tanky DPS and AoE in the past, so we had a little bit of leeway uh, with this patch, so we thought, you know, kind of with the holidays just coming up and everything, we'd do some nice, long-awaited buffs to some items, champions, and uh, game mechanics. Cool. Coming up in this patch are the Ionian Boots of Lucidity, mm -hmm. which are cooldown reduction boots uh, because of the lore match between Ionia and Noxus. So what's the whole design philosophy that came around behind those? Well, with the lore matches especially, you don't know what the outcome is going to be before you make the item, so you mm -hmm. don't want to do a game essential item, right? You want to do something that's a little more kind of uh, tertiary. So we went with the cooldown reduction boots because that's kind of a fun item, mm -hmm. kind of a new build option for a lot of different champions. We can yeah. see a lot of different characters finding those reasonably desirable. Let's talk about champions. Mm -hmm. uh, Cassie Pia is a new champion in the league. Uh, she's really fun, has a unique play style. What are some of the things we can expect to see to, uh, done to Cassiopeia this patch? Well, so we, we identified a couple of problems with Cassiopeia. Generally, those were usability problems and not generally power problems. Um, the second of those is late game scaling. So the ways we fix that is we fix her late game scaling by giving her a little bit more AP ratio to encourage those items to scale further into the late game since she really doesn't uh, bring a lot of utility other than her damage. We mm -hmm. thought that was really important. And uh, making it so her move speed on her combo goes up a little bit, but when you land that Q, you'll move a little faster. That makes it so you can get into that shorter range of that E a little quicker, you know, if you have to go around creeps or if you land a really skillful Q on the run, which is hard to do. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make sure that you could be rewarded by following up with that E a little better. So Zonia's ring is getting reimagined a little bit. It's yes. getting removed and we're getting two <laughs> items in its stead. But what's the rationale for having two new items? So uh, Zonia's Ring actually creates uh, a lot of limitations for us uh, to be able to make new caster items because Zonia's Ring is so powerful and so ubiquitous to a caster's build. We can't make anything that's really comparable without just sending power creep through the roof on all sorts of champions. So we wanted to split those into two items, one that provides armor, uh, ability power, and then the Zonia's active everybody's used to now, and that's the defensive caster option. Mm -hmm. The other one being kind of the infinity edge of casters, right? Like. Okay complete AP, you know, AP bonus is going up, you know, just if you want to hit as hard as you possibly can, this is the item you should be building. Okay. Um, one thing that's going to let us do is introduce new caster items in the future that uh, complement both of these items and existing items so that um, we can buff casters more effectively going forward. Also being the buff patch, we're buffing some of the current live champions as well, mm -hmm. uh, specifically the ones that got nerfed last patch, like Olaf and Garen. Yes. So. What's the what's the goal of all these reverted changes that we're making? We tried a couple of things, um, like the Udyr Tiger Stance change, some of the Olaf changes. They had some goals of uh, you know pushing pushing the champions into a specific direction. Trying them out, having hundreds of thousands of players test these out for us, we found that these did, just did not meet those goals. And if it's not meeting those goals, players aren't liking it, and it's not accomplishing what we want it to do, we are more than happy to revert it. Tiger Stance is being reverted more to its previous functionality. Olaf is getting a little bit of his power back. Garen also uh, is getting a little bit of his uh, scaling put back in to kind of get him where he was before this change. So, so in the same vein, there were a lot of other things that were changed in the last patch mm -hmm. that are you know, completely being reverted. Uh, what, what wards I understand is one of them. Can you just kind of talk through some of the changes that, that were changed and are now going back to closer to how they were originally in this patch? Right, uh, big one is uh, the wards The wards change. We, we were trying to fix a specific problem where range carries were way better ward killers than everybody else, and so, you know, you give every wards one health, and that's no longer the case. That uh, really creates a lot of problems, I think, with, uh, you know, ward baiting is no longer an option, which is an interesting way to start team fights. So what we're doing instead is we're changing it to all wards die in a certain amount of hits, regardless of how hard they get hit. Uh, this should accomplish our previous goal and allow the the uh, kind of emergent gameplay of ward baiting to still exist. Another thing we're doing with this patch is addressing the strength of the actual monsters, Dragon and Baron. Right. So what were the objectives with those guys? So that should have very little effect in the uh, kind of the late game situations where you see teams grouping up around Dragon or grouping up around Baron, but it should stop some of the level three soloing of Dragon or like, you know, 15 minute, you know, Karthus fiddlesticks, uh, <laughs> instant Baron ownage in one minute. We don't, we don't think those are good situations. Those, 
those kinds of things are making people have to kind of watch those areas and ward those areas constantly throughout the game. And if they don't, they essentially start losing very quickly. Um, so the, the changes are specifically to address soloing Dragon very early or dueling Baron very early. One of the biggest changes this patch is actually an exhaust remake. Mm -hmm. So what is that and what are the goals with it? So, so blind has been a, the type of mechanic in our game that's we've had a really hard time making it feel satisfying. Like it definitely does a good job of shutting down auto attackers, but you know, you'll blind somebody and then they use a bunch of physical abilities on you and you're like, well, that was worthless. Or if you're like a year trend to me, you get blinded and you just stand there and can't do anything for three seconds. We're not a big fan of that. So what we did is we took down a, a giant auto attack damage reduction on exhaust. So you can still attack and do a little bit of stuff. And then a 33% uh, reduction on the abilities of all characters. So, you know, if somebody yeah. does use their alt ability on you or something, it will do less damage and your exhaust does have some effect. Oh, cool. That's going to make Pendragon happy when he's playing you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's an unfortunate side effect. <laughs> yeah, it's really an unfortunate side effect. Watch out for Pendragon. We, we, don't, we don't like making Pendragon happy. <laughs>